Hi all, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening based on wherever you are located and whenever you are watching this video. My name is Saurav Dhani and in this particular video in the series of creating business central slash nav docker containers and images, we'll be talking about how do you, you add a new user in your container and how you see the list of images and container that you have in your local system. So let's talk about why it's needed to add a user in container. So that's my mistake in the last video I forgot to tell you about there are uh, password limitations or you know a pattern that you need to give while you you are selecting a password for nav username which comes with a minimum requirement and those minimum requirements are that it must be at least eight character long and contain at least one uppercase letter one lowercase letter and one number it must not be a sequence of three or more ascending descending or repeating character so while creating container if you have not followed this pattern while entering your password you might not be able to log into your container which you build in the last video so that can be one reason that you want to add a new user in your container or the other reason can be that you might need multiple users inside your containers so let's talk about it how we do it so the first thing as we do all the time is is our docker running yes it's running let's go and run our powershell as administrator once we do that in the command panel and i'm again repeating it if you don't see it you can choose this action from the view menu show command add-on and then we'll select new nav container nav user if you want to use windows user you can use this but i prefer nav user which makes my life a little bit easier now here are some parameters that you need to set the first one being the credential or the username that you want to get so i want to use my name then do you want to assign premium plan yes i do do you want to change your password at the next logon and it's a boolean value so you can either give zero or one so i'll keep it zero the default value is one so if you don't set this parameter as soon as you log in system will ask you to change your password then the container name and if you remember in our last video i used the container name demo and then the permission set id which is i want to give a super so let's run it and see what happens so once you run it it system will prompt you to enter the new password or the password that you want to give for this user so i'll follow the pattern and i'll make sure that it satisfies what is required and it'll take a while and i'll read i'll repeat what the password minimum requirements are it must be eight character long should contain at least one upper letter one lower letter and one number and it must not have a sequence of three or more ascending descending or repeating characters so keep that in mind so the user is created let's try to log in into our tenant with the new user to our container web client it pops up the web client and the new user that I've created is sort of and then I'll use my new password that I've just given and do a sign in so now it understands that I'm a valid user and I'm allowed in system because I have permissions and all so if you have done that mistake which is my mistake sorry for that you can still add that user in your container and then go ahead with that now coming back to the second thing that we are going to discuss about in this video is how do you see a list of images and containers that you have on your local machine or host so the one way is that you can always come here and say docker images 
will show you all the images that you have downloaded or pulled from the internet or if you have locally built them and we'll maybe talk about that later and it tells you about the size the when you created it and all and to check containers you can say docker container ls which is a list once you hit enter it'll show you the list of containers that you have so that's one way which some people like I prefer to use my VS code which is our modern uh, development environment and use that for checking this also so let's see how we how if you want how you can actually use that to see a list of containers slash images in your local machine and this is my some learning projects so I'll close it down not mandatory but I can okay so what you can do is you need to click on let me close the folder so that it doesn't trouble us and then if you go into extension window you can always look for an extension called docker when you look for it you can choose this and choose install and let's see what happens with installing this so I have already installed it and as you can see I can see an icon for docker so when you click on it it will scan your system and tell you how many containers you have and what is the name of that so if you see this the name is demo up by last 14 hours and it's healthy and you can also see the list of images that I have downloaded and all of the settings about docker so I prefer to keep all this in one place so that makes my life easier to check how many containers and that helps me to reduce space or delete anything because if you see here there are delete command or prune command on all these levels so I can come here and delete them wherever I want the second thing that I have used as an extension and you'll see it's already installed on mine is PowerShell so PowerShell is already installed and how it helps me is I can come here in my PowerShell mode which then gives me flexibility so I'm using a little older one let me restart it yes so it's updating my PowerShell let's give it some time so it have installed that and as it said I need to reload so let me reload the window so the commands that we ran in PowerShell here you actually can run it from the VS code itself you need to make sure that you are already clicked in on PowerShell and the in the terminal you have PowerShell integrated console selected and then I can always say here docker images and it will work in the same way as it works in the powershell so I like to keep everything on my look on one place so let's try another one which is docker container ls so I try to keep everything in one place which makes my life easy, easier and I don't have to open multiple windows per se so if you like it you can install these two extensions one is called PowerShell and another is called as Docker which will show you the containers and the images that you have and PowerShell make it flexible to run all your commands from PowerShell commands from here and you don't have to go actually into the PowerShell window so i guess that's all for today thank you for your questions and based on your questions i'm creating all these videos suggestions uh, comments on those videos please do like share and you know subscribe to this channel that keeps me motivated to keep on recording these videos that help you if they are helping you see you next time with a, another video and Till then, goodbye. Thank you.